All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Only 15 practices. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. Like, focus on yourself and develop yourself. Find ways to get better. Learn from everybody that's around you. Everybody goes before you. Have to. Just try to learn from everybody. Both those, both those guys did a lot of good things this spring. Oh, there's a quarterback battle still very much a brewing for BYU as they approach the 2024 college football season and year two in the mm -hmm. Big 12. Mm -hmm. So let's play the hypothetical game. We like to do that here on BYU Sports Nation, Jerem. If we got shows to fill. BYU played today, and I know that's a big if. Who are they playing? Who would you start at quarterback? Is it Jake Retzloff or Gary Bohannon as of April 2nd? If it was today, uh, I think it'd be Jake Retzloff because he knows the system more. Aaron Roderick has repeated that several times. Um, but if it's on August 31st, I probably, I'm guessing that Gary Bohannon with his experience um, in Power 5 and FBS mm -hmm. is going to win that battle. But I think it's going to be close. Like, obviously, both are, are capable, good players. Uh, Gary has a lot of experience, as chronicled by some of these numbers. So 33 FBS games played. Jake has four, right? JC transferred first year last year. Touchdown per game is the one stat where Jake's a little higher. But again, volume is low. Interceptions per game, Gary lower. Yards per pass, significantly higher. Uh, QB rating, significantly higher. Jake had to play a tough schedule. We'll talk about that in a second. But, um, yeah, if it, was, if it was today, I think it'd be Jake. But I'm going to guess that Gary Bohannon wins the battle by a hair. That doesn't mean Jake won't win it. It's just I think experience will win out initially. But maybe Aaron values experience in the play, this playbook more. We'll see, man. And it doesn't matter necessarily who wins the starting job because we both think that both will start games in We're the upcoming about season. Who's starting game one? Yes. And then it's who's who starting knows? game two. Yeah, who knows? It'd be the same guy you would think after Southern Illinois. But, like, after the second or third game, who knows? Yeah, injuries happen. Like, both are going to be used, man. I'd be shocked if the other doesn't play at all. <laughs> That'd be shocking. On April 2nd, yes, it's Jake Retzloff. Logic reigns supreme here. He knows the playbook better. He's been around the program longer. He's worked with Aaron Roderick longer. He has four games of experience starting with this BYU team in the Big 12. And Gary Bohannon, the thing that works against him, yes, is he doesn't have the exposure that Jake does, but he's been sitting out for a long time. Exposure to the playbook specifically of BYU? Yeah. yeah. And within the program. Not to say that he sort can't of get with caught Grimes, up right? to speed. Yeah, there's, there's some ties there and some of the verbiage is Un similar. Enough to where BYU had to change their verbiage against Baylor. Yes. Yeah. Because that similar, they apparently. could pick off play calls. Yeah. Now, hear me out. I, I, I think a lot of BYU fans are like, well, you wouldn't have brought in Gary Bohannon if you didn't think that he was going to be the starter. He was a starter for Baylor when they won the Big 12 championship. Come on, it's, it's going to be Gary Bohannon. Now, again, hear me out. Jake Retzloff, in the four starts that he made, Jerem, were against the second place, third place, fourth place, and tied for, oh, no, sorry, tied for fourth place team in the Big 12. So you're, you're talking about all top four teams in the Big 12. That's who Jake Retzloff had to start against. Oh, and two of them are on the road at West Virginia yeah. and at Oklahoma State. The other was Texas, the first place. It's unbelievable. That he didn't face. There was no, there was no Cincinnati for Jake Retzloff. No, Texas Tech. No, there was, there was none of that. Those are the two wins for BYU. Yeah, and if, even if you expanded out to teams that were not great, the BYU didn't play against. There was no Houston on BYU's schedule last year for Jake yeah. Retzloff to ease into things with. Yeah. He just got thrown into the fire. And how close was BYU to winning two of those games? Yeah. BYU fans are mad that BYU didn't win those two games against Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. And unfortunately, Retzloff is kind of at the center that he takes the brunt of that specifically because against Oklahoma of because of the pick six that gets returned 100 yards. If yep. BYU scores, they're going to win that game. Like, momentum's on your side. You're home. Oklahoma's on their heels. They got their back and quarterback, quarterback in. Come on. Like, BYU's going to win that game. And so I just want to be fair to Jake in that while it wasn't great, 0-4, he played the, top four teams in the Big 12. There was, there was yeah. nothing easy about that for him to have to step into and, like, all of a sudden, oh, yeah, go win some games, man. It'll be all right. It wasn't just his first exposure at BYU or the Big 12. It was in FBS. Yes. He was a JUCO guy, first time in FBS. So, yeah, that's tough. He didn't have any tune-ups whatsoever. He didn't have Sam Houston. Southern Utah. What can Jake Retzloff do given a full offseason in preparation? Because he believes that he is the guy. 
And maybe he comes he out and he, he is the starter against Southern Illinois and he looks fantastic. And BYU puts up 48 points and they win 48 to 7. Now, if they go 14 to nothing again, then you're in trouble. We'll, have, we'll be, there's issues. Then yeah. you're in trouble. You got to put a 40 spot. Come so, on. again, I get the impression from BYU fans that I interact with and that I, you know, hear from on social media that, oh, it's, come on, it's going to be Gary because of his, what he's done in the past. I, Jake, that could needs, be the case. He needs a fair shake here. And so to be fair to the situation, I wanted to point out, like, look what he faced last year within the Big 12. There was no cupcake for him, not even close. I, I just I wish I almost wish we could have seen him against the Cincinnati or Houston or somebody yeah. that was like yeah. not Oklahoma State or at or against Iowa State or yeah. at West Virginia. Like that that's tough. Yeah. Um it's hard to beat a team for BYU that wins eight or more games that season. B BYU wins 27% of those games in the Satake era. If that team that year ends up with eight wins. Okay, so one out of every four. 27%. One out of every four. 13 and 35. So last year, three of those four that you mentioned, those were teams that won eight or more. It, it's hard, right? Only 13 wins in seven seasons, eight seasons. It's, it's like one and a half per season. It's, it's very hard. So we'll see what happens, man. Um, but BYU isn't playing a game today. They're going to have, uh, you know, off-season conditioning and uh, throwing, and uh, then we'll get into fall camp in early August, and then we'll see, man. Um, I wonder in fall camp how long it'll go. Will it be like two weeks, and then you dial it in, and you have like a full two weeks with that person running as the guy? Whoever's not the guy, just be ready, though. <laughs> just be ready. Because if you're not the starter initially, NBD to me. Like, you just wait. You're going to get in at yeah. some point. Either someone gets hurt or someone's not good enough. Injury or ineptitude. So I, I'm not too worried about it. But Aaron Roderick yesterday uh, in the conversation that we heard from Saturday said, I said, what's the criteria for who's going to be the starter? And he said, whoever doesn't turn it over and whoever moves the team, meaning the chains and down the field for touchdowns. How do you determine that whoever, in fall camp? You, you have your reps, you have your metrics, you have your situations, um, I would imagine, right? Um, I, it, ultimately, that will be decided in the games, but yeah, you, and you have a lot of film on Gary Bohannon to have a sense of that. It's just, can he move you within this offense? How is he yeah. at the line? Is he changing things? Is he seeing things well? Yeah. Those are all the things that, uh, you know, some of them, that Aaron Roderick and company are going to look at, but Aaron's, Aaron's a bit of a quarterback whisperer with Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall, three-star guys who have got into the NFL. I'm confident he's going to figure out who the best guy is. Last year was tough. Keaton Slovis was hurt and playing through that injury. They wanted to redshirt Jake. Otherwise, they would have brought him in earlier. They felt like Keaton was good enough to play through that. But certainly you have this guy or that guy. And it's nice to have a Gary Bohannon who has experience. And in 2021, he had a tremendous year where he was starting quarterback for uh, very good Baylor team. An eventual Sugar Bowl champion yeah, and Big 12 champion. Yes, and he kind of got injured, right, and, and uh, what, what didn't finish that out, unfortunately, at the very end there with the Big 12 title game and the Sugar Bowl, and that's where, that's where you saw a little bit of a quarterback change there with an injury. But, uh, yeah, Gary's, Gary's shown that he can be pretty good. So are these guys like top-end guys that are going to win BYU the Big 12? Right now we haven't quite seen that or sh they haven't shown that at the moment. But if Gary can capture some of that 2021, if Jake can learn from what the last four games of the season uh, were, then perhaps BYU can get to a bowl game plus. Get to a bowl game is always the standard here. I'd love to feel like uh, and, and seem like early in the season, if oh, okay, BYU could be like an eight-win team. That'd be awesome. Right now I'm feeling like, okay, it's a fringe bowl team. You're maybe, maybe getting to a bowl or maybe not. But uh, we need to see how year two of Jay Hill is. Is the running game established? That will be the best friend of whoever the starter is. Because last year, it stunk, so it fell too heavily on the quarterback's shoulders. And in the case of Keaton Slovis, he had an injured one. And in the case of Jake Retzloff, he was a new guy. It was, it was new to FBS, and he's talented, but that's just hard to be thrown in like that. So I think a run game and an increased defense could really make it so you're not like, hey, you have to go win us the game, Gary Bohannon or Jake Retzloff. I'd love to, for them to not have to be in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, you're the quarterback. you got to be ready to do that. Think about the caliber of teams that are coming into Provo. I mean, the over-under initially on BYU and the way too early eyes was set at four and a half. Okay, so you're talking last year or this year? For this year. Four and a half wins. Yay. 
bottom in the Big 12. It was right there with too. Houston. Okay, four and a half wins. Yeah. My goodness. So it's fair to think that BYU is a fringe bowl team right now. Kalani Satake says, I prefer it. That's exactly where I, yeah. I, I want people to think that we're going to go. Like I want people to think that BYU is a four and a half win team. But the talent of teams that are coming to Provo, I mean, you got Kansas State and Kansas and Oklahoma State. They're all in Provo. Who's yeah. the guy? Like that's where Gary Bohannon has that experience. How much can he draw upon that given that it was two and a half years ago? And at the time he's playing, it'll be three years previous, 2021, when he was doing his We were damage. asking Keaton the same thing, were we not? Yes. He wasn't good at Pitt. He wasn't good the year before that. We were asking him for to recapture 2019. How much can so. Gary draw upon something that happened three years ago to use to his don't, advantage? Don't we do this with every return missionary quarterback, though? Don't we? We say, oh, can he recapture the senior year at Maple Mountain or Corner yeah, Canyon? It's a little different, You know though. what I mean? Yeah, they, it's a, well, is, is it? It's even harder because they haven't played like at all. Gary didn't play last year, but he was playing in 22. Played seven games we in saw 2022. Him. We saw him against BYU. With, with return missionaries, by the time they actually get meaningful reps, it's been four years since they actually played in a meaningful game. So we're, it's less of an ask for Gary Bohannon than it is for return missionary two years later after the mission. And that's where Jake Retzloff has a clear advantage there has been no significant break and now he goes into a season thinking i'm the guy and i'm going to prepare like i'm the guy both should yes so and by the way he didn't turn the ball over in spring football so jake has that going for and him aaron, as well and aaron cares a lot about and aaron that. said he was aggressive enough yes because you can check it down and never turn it over feels like BYU's gonna have to go live a lot in fall camp to just determine to give these quarterbacks looks like to figure out who in the heck can handle the game speed and not turn the ball over We'll see. You run a risk, though, yeah. when you go live, but that's maybe what BYU has to do.